water, an element that keeps our modern society moving. In our quest to treat and maintain clean water, we must also maintain the equipment and processes used in water and wastewater systems. Proper preventative and emergency maintenance procedures are required to keep our water and wastewater treatment processes running efficiently. Before performing maintenance, we typically plan the maintenance activity. We make sure we have adequate parts and supplies and that the maintenance will not disrupt the treatment process or cause permit violations. In this planning process, we must also consider the safety aspects in regard to the procedure. There are a number of dangers that a treatment plant operator may have to deal with in regard to performing maintenance. Some of these dangers include confined spaces, falls, electrical energy, collapse of ditches, moving equipment or stored energy, dangerous atmospheres, flooding or drowning, traffic, sprains or strains, crush injuries, biological hazards, and chemical hazards. Some of the deadliest hazards found are in confined spaces. Working in confined spaces requires specialized training and equipment to safely carry out the procedure. There are a myriad of hazards in regard to confined spaces. Some examples of confined spaces include manholes, sewers, digesters, pits, and wet wells. One of the primary concerns with confined spaces is the atmospheric hazards. Atmospheric hazards are the leading cause of confined space deaths. Atmospheric hazards can also occur in other parts of the treatment systems as well. For example, anaerobic digesters produce explosive methane gas that can and has led to deadly explosions. To detect and deal with atmospheric hazards, the use of personal gas detection equipment and fixed gas detection equipment is a must. All gas detection equipment must be properly maintained and calibrated. Falls are another cause of injury and death in treatment systems. Be sure to use proper fall protection equipment at all times when climbing is required, especially in regard to confined spaces. Be aware that corrosion can weaken the metal steps in manholes, rendering them unable to support the weight of a worker. Many ladders have safety cages to assist with preventing falls. Keep ladders and walkways free from debris and foreign substances. In water and wastewater facilities, electrical motors are a key element. When servicing or maintaining an electrical motor, we want to make sure the circuit does not become accidentally energized. The same is true when working on any piece of equipment. Accidental charging of an electrical circuit could lead to injuries. To prevent a piece of equipment from being started up or accidentally energized while we are working on it, we can implement a procedure known as lockout-tagout. In the lockout-tagout procedure, the switchgear for the equipment is tagged and locked out by the people performing the maintenance. The equipment cannot be started until everyone removes his lock and the tag from the switch. Oftentimes, due to the nature of water and sewer lines, maintenance of these lines may require excavation with a worker in a ditch. There is always a danger of the ditch collapsing while the worker is in the ditch. Proper trenching and shoring is required to protect those people who must work in the ditch. Oftentimes, the lines we must work on are located under streets and highways. Proper control of traffic is a must to protect the workers and the motoring public. Electrical motors, supplies and equipment found in water and wastewater facilities are oftentimes very heavy. Statistics indicate that strains and sprains are among the most common injuries in water or wastewater systems. Be sure to use proper techniques when lifting heavy equipment. After completing the maintenance job, be sure to replace all guards on moving equipment. When working around moving equipment, beware that loose clothing or jewelry can get caught in equipment and draw you in. 
Because water is a key element in any water or wastewater facility, the use of a personal flotation device or PFD is always recommended when working around water and especially around moving water. Your facility should also be equipped with rescue devices for people who may fall into a tank. When working with or around raw wastewater or raw drinking water, there is always the possibility of coming into contact with disease-causing organisms. Typically, good hygiene practices are sufficient to deal with this potential danger. Get into the habit of washing your hands regularly and wearing proper protective gear when working around potentially contaminated water. It is not a good idea to eat, smoke, or drink while working in potentially dangerous areas. If possible, take a shower before leaving work and do not take contaminated clothing home. Many treatment systems have uniform services or washing machines right at work. In the course of proper treatment, many water and wastewater facilities handle a myriad of chemicals. Examples of some chemicals commonly found in treatment systems include chlorine, sulfur dioxide, potassium permanganate, alum, lime, and reagents for the testing of water. Proper handling of chemicals is essential to protect the workers and the neighbors of the facility. Some chemicals, such as chlorine gas, can pose a significant danger to people within the facility and to the community. There are many laws that impact upon chemicals found in a treatment system, including Community and Worker Right to Know laws, SARA Title III, Pennsylvania Act 165, and Section 112R of the Federal Clean Air Act. Working around chemicals requires proper protective gear that may include respirators, self-contained breathing apparatus, splash suits, gloves, or even level A protection. At a minimum, workers need to be familiar with the material safety data sheets for the chemicals that they must work with. Many chemical products are incompatible with other chemicals and, if mishandled, could have disastrous results. Generally, when performing maintenance, workers should have steel-toed work boots, hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, and hearing protection for high noise areas. Additional personal protective clothing and gear may be necessary, depending on circumstances. Through good planning and following proper procedures and techniques, most accidents are preventable. However, you do need to be prepared in case something does go wrong. Good communication is essential for successfully completing tasks and is absolutely critical in dealing with emergency situations. If you are working at a remote location, be sure you have communications that allow for a prompt response by emergency responders. Having personnel trained in first aid and CPR can save lives as can devices like automatic external defibrillators. Be sure you have a properly equipped emergency first aid kit nearby when you are working. Employee emergency information sheets can provide vital information to emergency responders about care of a patient. It is a good idea to keep these information sheets with your first aid kit so they can be readily handed over to emergency responders during an event. In summary, water and wastewater systems have many potential dangers. However, with proper training, equipment, and procedures, we can work safely, maintaining our systems and providing the public with the quality products they expect and deserve. Safe, clean water.